you got to remind yourself daily, don't give up, because he won't give up on you. Come on, cry and say that, don't give up, don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. Somebody's got to believe it, don't give up. joyful noise unto God all ye lands sing forth the honor of his name make his praises glorious that's what we're here to do father we give you praise for this evening I pray that every life will be touched tonight in the name of Jesus we thank you for the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit to flow throughout this sanctuary over the airways into the homes of each and every individual. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good. Come on and put your hands together. Let's just bless the Lord. What a great day it is to be thankful that you are still alive. Somebody say, I am still here. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word in Ephesians 3.20. Now under him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Thank you that we are still here, that we are still alive, that we are still healthy. Thank you for all your help in our lives. We come to worship. We come to praise you. We come to magnify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Clap your hands as Ella William Harris. Come and pronounce a blessing over all of our children. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes. we thank you again, Lord God, for all of our children, our children's children, and the great grandchildren that are yet to come. Lord, we just praise your name that you have good things and great things and powerful things in store for each and every one of them, oh God. Oh, God, we pray that you will bless them going out, going in. Lord, we pray that you protect our children, oh, God, from seen and unseen dangers that are around them, oh, God. We pray, Lord God, that you will keep the minds of our children. Stay on you, Father God. Keep their minds in the name of Jesus. Protect their 
spies from the enemy that will lead them down the wrong path. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that our children will be healthy, holy, and wise. Lord, we pray that you keep sickness, diseases away from each and every one of our children, that they will live healthy lives, whole lives, productive lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray that our children will be on the road children in school, Father God, that they will graduate at the highest degree in the name of Jesus. And we pronounce the blessing over their lives, the perpetual blessing will rest upon them. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen.
Somebody give the Lord a hand clap and thank him for his blessings over your life. Don't forget this Friday at 11 o'clock, we will uh, celebrate the life of Miss Josephine Carter. So if you can, please come and uh, we are going to honor her in every way that we can. Somebody say amen. Tonight, our speaker is Minister Booker Newbin. I've known Booker for mm, a few years. He was uh, with us from day one when we started our church. He and his wonderful wife, uh, Krista, we were able to do their marriage years ago. Uh, they've been married for over 20 plus years. Love the Lord and just know God is on their side. Somebody say amen. Amen. God loves you. Thank you for being here. He loves the Lord. Put your hands together and welcome the, 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 the man of God that's going to bring the word of God on this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. God bless everyone to here tonight. And Jordan, I was to ask you to help me out. There's a song on my heart, but I don't know how to sing worth nothing. And it starts out like this. I love you. I love you. I love you more today because you care for me in such a special way. So I praise you, I lift you up, I'll magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, come on, let's say it again here, come on. I love you, I love you, I love you more today. Because he cared for me in such a special way. So I praise you, I lift you up, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. One more, come on, come on, come on. Because I think we need to get in our spirit here. I love you. Come on, come on. I love you. Why do you love him? Why do you love him? Yes, come on, come on, come on. Because you care for me in such a special way. Come on. That's why I praise you. I give you all the praise, Lord. Yes, Lord. I lift you up. I magnify your name. Yes, Lord. Yes. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled. Come on. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Lord, I just thank you tonight, Lord. And, Lord, I truly do love you, Lord. I praise your name, Father God, not just for the things you've done, but the unseen things. You see, I know that there's unseen attacks upon my life that you have guarded off. I know there's some unseen sicknesses that wanted to take me out. But you said no. You call me by name, Father God. Your word said you called me a friend of yours. So, Lord, I'm asking tonight that you just use me, Father God. You know it's me, Booker, Lord, and I need your help tonight, Father God. I can't do it on my own, Father God. Oh, God, I ask that you sit me down, Father God, so you may rise up, Father God. Oh, God, use these lips of clay, Father God. Let me speak with a voice of clarity, Father God. Oh, God, I ask, oh, Father God, for your perfect will to be done in the house tonight, Father God. Oh, God, if you don't change one life, I ask that you change me, that you start with me, Father God. Oh, God, I ask that you move all through the sanctuary, Father God. Oh, God, I ask, oh, Father God, that you move anything out of the way that needs to be removed out of the way. Any hindrance, Father God, anything that may be coming against your will to be done, Lord, I'm asking that you move it, Father God. And, Lord, I give you all the praise, and I give you all the glory tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, 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 Lord. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, choir. Oh, I truly give God honor for just being here tonight. You know, he truly is the head of my life, you know. 
And without him, I don't know what I would do, where I would be. As a matter of fact, I had two predictions on my life. But two predictions was you're going to be dead or you're going to be in jail. That's the only prediction that was spoken over me as a young man. And God, I God be glory to God that I'm here standing here tonight. I never thought after over 20-something years that exactly, we were just, me and my wife were just talking the other day. We said, how long have we been knowing pastor? And we looked at the preacher. You married us like when you were in your what, 40s, huh? Like 40 something. I was looking at that picture first. I said, I'm going to bring it to you. That's a young man right there. So he hasn't changed at all, you know. And I just thank God for my pastor and first lady. See, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. You know, a lot of you guys, you know, you, you see him as pastor and first lady, and you see him as Mr. Simpkins and Miss Simpkins. But these right here are my spiritual parents. This is my spiritual father, and this is my spiritual mother. And I don't want to get emotional. But, you know, as I got earlier, older in age, I become emotional, become a crybaby. But I want to tell you something about this man right here. See, I didn't have a father in my life at all. Only thing I see my father do was beat my mom. I never seen him. He never came to one of my graduations. He never said, good job, accomplished. He, I never heard those words out of him. The first fatherly hug that's ever given to me was this by this man right here. So these are my parents, you know. Like Peter was to Jesus, I'm their Peter. So if you mess with them, I'll Peter X you. <laughs> Amen. But I love these guys with all my heart. And I just want to give honor to my wife tonight. She's been with me 20 plus years, right? You know, I haven't been easy. I haven't been easy. But this is my rider right here, see? She just goes along with the flow sometimes. Sometimes she tells me no. Sometimes she tells me yes. But I got to tell you, this lady right here is my elbow. Uh-huh. She keeps all the moving parts of me working, right? So if you see something good happen tonight in the Word, it's probably her hand on it, okay? So give honor to God. So I want to get into the Word tonight because I have a lot of Scripture, and I believe that once I become in this platform right here, that all you should be hearing is the Word of God. We could talk politics. We could talk sports. But we could talk that any time. But right now, our spirits are hungry for the Word of God. Can somebody say Amen. I want to make a charge to you. We do weddings, and Pastor knows about this. And one thing in a wedding is there's a thing called the charge, okay? And the charge is you make a charge to the witnesses. You make a charge to the people who are there. And that charge is that you're going to stand behind those people when they get married, do the good, the good, bad, or whatever it else, and you're going to pray over them, right? So I want to make a charge tonight to Emmanuel Christian Center, right? Whoever stands behind this platform and preaches to you, you have a charge of a pre and a post, okay? Does anybody understand a pre and a post? A pre means that you're going to pray before they get on the podium, right, and they preach. And then after they leave, you're going to pray. Reason why, I want to give us quick testimony here of what happens here. Because every time a person gets up here, he is pouring virtue into you. So he's releasing something into you, okay? His greatest, greatest, greatest attacks are going to happen before he preaches the word, and his greatest attacks are going to happen after he preaches the word. So that's why you need to do a pre and a post. You need to go ahead and pray for the man of God, whoever. I don't care who it is, a pastor, if it's me, or any other minister, stand up here. You need to be praying before, and you need to pray after. Now, do I have anybody that say amen? They'll do that. Amen. Now, let's get on the word. I'm going to ask everyone to stand at their feet tonight. I'm not going to hold you long because I believe in one thing, two things I believe when I preach. One thing I believe is giving you the word, and second thing I believe is in prayer. Before we leave this building, we're going to pray. <laughs> Amen. And the word of God tonight is going to come out of Romans 8, 31 and 37, okay? And Joe's going to help me out tonight. He's going to make me look like the better person I am up here, okay? So the Bible reads, does everybody have that? Or can we move? Let's move forward. The Bible reads, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, can somebody say us? Who could be against us? Can somebody say us? For he did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us who? All. For how shall he not then give freely to us all things? He shall bring a charge against God's elect. Who shall bring that charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. So I want to know, he says in his word, then, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore was raised, who is even at the right hand of God, making intercession for who? Us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or prosecution or famine or necklace or pearl or sword as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more through conquerors for him who loved us. I want to read that last sentence again. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Amen. You may be seated tonight. There's a thing called, I don't know if anybody has one at home, it's called a personal Bible. Does anybody have a personal Bible? So what a personal Bible does, what it does is it kind of takes out the we, the you, and the I and puts your name involved in it. And I love that reading that Bible because now it comes to life to me. It makes it seems like God is speaking directly to me because when he's calling, somebody's calling you by your personal name, that means it's directly towards you. It is not towards your neighbor. It is not towards your friend. It's not towards your relative, but it's for you. So when I read that last sentence, it says that yet in all these things, Booker, you are more than a conqueror. See, we have to go ahead and read the Bible and make it personal to us. Make it, a, make it like, seem like it affects our personal lives. Sometimes we read the Bible and we think it's for the next man. Sometimes we might be thinking it's for our mother or we think it's for somebody else. But yet, no, the Bible is designed directly towards you, okay? The Bible says, you know, in Amos 8 and 12, it says, For shall wonder from sea to sea, from north to east, they shall run to and from seeking the word of God that it may be not may be found. Did you know back in, later on in history here, the word of God says that the Bible is going to come as belief. It's going to be non-existent. That means it's going to be a retro. That means it's going to be a vintage. That means you're not going to be able to find the word of God. That's why the word of God said, I, I, the word I've hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Because there's going to be a time in your life to where you're not going to be able to cling to your Bible. So right now, I suggest everybody, when you get a Bible in your hand, cling to it. Because you don't know in days ahead how much that Bible is going to cost. There's some Bibles right now that cost 100 So some Bibles cost 200 But what would you do if the Bible cost a million? What would you do if the Bible cost two million? So that's why the Word of God is so important to us. Tonight I want to talk to you about a subject that we all share in this room, okay? It's something that we all need in our lives. It's something that we all said that we, if we had it, we know or we think we know what we'll do with it. It is something that we even have thought about daily, it's something that we can look at anyone's face. I can look at all y'all face in this room, and I can tell you, you need it. Yeah. Marriages are seeking it. They're dying by the wayside for not receiving it. Families right now are being destroyed just because they don't have it. Jobs are being seeking it every day. They're, they're lost. Businesses are closing their doors. Churches are even closing their doors because they don't have it. Tonight, the title of my message is, the more. Can somebody say the more? See, in life, somewhere down in life when you were born or somewhere down in life, you required a need for the more. Some people may call it greed. Some people may call it selfishness. Some people may even call it their overflow. Whatever you want to call it tonight, you are in need. I'm in need for the more. You can use this more than two different ways. I want to talk to, those, talk to you about those. You can use it in a positive way or you can use it in a negative way. Maybe it's you here sitting here tonight that you use the more in a positive way. You use it for a social and a, and a justice, justice movement. Maybe you might use your more for a spiritual movement. Maybe some people, but not y'all, I'm not talking about you online or anybody else in here, Maybe some people use it for a negative way. Maybe it's to seek self-righteousness. Maybe it's to use it, use it in a biased way against one's race and one's religion. Whatever way you use the more, I believe that God wants us tonight, wants us to understand the power that the more has in it. Can somebody say amen? In order to qualify for this more, there's a couple things. Either you want it, the more, or you receive the more. Now, to want the more, let me tell you something. There's no qualifications, so you're all qualified in here. It doesn't require any ethnic or religious affiliation. 
That means you don't have to go to church for the more. It doesn't require a degree or a position of power to have the want the more. Now, the want to receive it, that's a different story. See, some of you in here may be disqualified from the more. Some of you may not, some of you may have to have some requirements of an ethnic and a religious affiliation just to have the more. Maybe you might have a, a requirement of a degree or you might have a position of power just to have the more. While most of our mores are totally in your control, they're in your hands, you can receive them by what you do and what you don't do. Let me give you an example here. If you want more money, what do you do? Get another job, right? In return, if you do good diligence with that money, that should produce more houses. That should produce more cars. That should produce more material things in life. But church, I'm here on an assignment tonight to tell you that there is one more that's totally out of your hands. And that is time. The Bible says in Psalms 31 and 15, my times are in your hands. Uh, the common denominator between all of us tonight is time. Time is something that we all need tonight. Oh, God. Time, you know, we have always misused it. Time, we have taken it for granted. Time, we even try to crutch it to fit our needs. Some people even have the time, they try to slow it down. There's an old saying that goes, there is not enough time in a day. I want to talk to you tonight about a man that I, I admire. And when I get behind here, I don't, I don't talk about this man because I'm throwing darts at him or anything else. But I want to talk to you about a man named Steve Jobs. Very wealthy man. At the age 56, he died a billionaire. He wrote one of his favorite, one of his most, my most favorite messages on his deathbed. Can I share some of that with you tonight? He said, I have reached the pinnacle of success in the business world. In others' eyes, my life is the epitome of success. However, a size work, I have little joy at all. In the end, my wealth is only the fact of life that I am accustomed to. At this very moment, I'm lying on my deathbed and recalling my own life. I realize that all the recognitions and, and all the wealth and all that took, I took so much pride in have become pale to me, become meaningless to me in the face of death. See, he says, you can employ someone to drive a car. Uh-huh. You can employ someone to make money for you. But you cannot employ somebody to bear your sickness on your deathbed. He said, material things are lost and can be found. But one thing that can never be lost and found is life. He says, whatever stage of life you're in right now, with time, you will face the day when your curtain falls. He said to treasure your family, to love your spouse, to love your friends, to treat yourself well, cherish yourself well. And he said, as we grow old and hopefully wiser, he said, I come to realize that a $3,000 watch or a 30,000 30, watch both tell the same what? Time. He said, you will realize that the inner, inner happiness does not come from material things of this world. It doesn't come from the things for, of this world, of the mores of this world. He said, whether you fly, first class, or economy, he said, if that plane goes down, guess what? You go down with it. Oh, here's a man right here dying on his deathbed. And I bar him because of the words he said on his deathbed. See, there's going to come a time in your life that you're going to realize that the more that you're chasing is it worth all your time. How valuable is your more? Where is your more at? Is it more for the things of the kingdom of the God or is it more for the things of this world? 
See, we have to do a self-check upon ourselves. And we have to look and see which one is more important. See, no man controls time. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 1, it says, Do not boast about the things of tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring. Yeah. Oh, here we go. See, when you're chasing your mores in life, you have to be mindful about the time. There's an old saying that says, time sits still for what? No one. While you're chasing your more, I want you to realize tonight, and this is a very key point, a soul might be slipping away. You have to realize tonight that you are accountable for someone. The Bible says in Romans 13 and 11, and do, you do, and do know this, knowing the time, now is high time to awake out of your sleep, for now our salvation is nearer when we first believed. You are accountable for someone in this life. Your job for that someone is to speak into their lives. Your job for that someone is to pray for them. See, we sit here in church and we gather the what? More. But we go into the world and we don't get empty from what? The more. We take the more home with us. Like Minister Teacher said, she said a powerful word a couple weeks ago, we're sitting like fat cats, unwilling to share the word of God. Oh, man. I want you to understand tonight that the devil understands the more. The Bible says in Matthew 4 and 2 that when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Anytime you become hungry for something in the flesh, you are wanting more than what you have now. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil tried to deceive him with the more. More fame, more praise for man, more material things in life, more power, more money, more houses, more are the things that will distract him, more are the things that will distract me, more are the things that will distract you from fulfilling God's purpose and fulfilling your flesh purpose. Someone may be asking me tonight, why does the more so important to talk about tonight? Or why should I even care about talking about this more? The Bible says in, in Exodus 34 and 14, you shall worship no other God, for the Lord God name is jealous. He is a jealous God. Can somebody say amen? You will hunger. Anytime you hunger for something in life, it will produce a want for the more. We have to check. We have to recheck to make sure that the more that you are chasing is not what? Your God. We have to get rid of the butts. You have to lose your butt. What do you mean by that? Everybody's looking like, what butt? Uh-huh. You have to lose your butt. Let me give you an example. But if God gave me the resource, I have it to blank, blank, blank. You fill in the blanks. But if God created it, it must be good, blank, blank, blank. You fill in the blanks. But I'm using it to further God's kingdom. Are you? Blank, blank, blank. But, 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 but. We try to use our bus to justify the chase after the more. Oh, uh, somebody might be asking tonight, but Booker, what about you? <laughs> See, God has been good to me. But you ask, what about me? I'm glad you asked. Because Romans 2 and 21 says, you therefore who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach to, to a man not to steal, do you steal yourself? You see, no one is, is exempt from God's word. As a matter of fact, once we stand up here and we preach the word and we teach the word, no matter if you're teaching in the children's, no matter if you're teaching in the sanctuary, we all are accountable, held accountable for higher action. So as leaders, we have to watch what we say. We have to watch what we do. Because we're always in the mirror. People are always looking, Booker, are you chasing the more? Oh, somebody here tonight said, God produced the more in me. It's in the Bible. They say, they get an attitude. You know how they get an attitude. They say, it's in the B-I-B-L-E. Well, I agree, 
to disagree, Pastor. Uh -huh. See, you got to watch out for the Bible twisters. Yeah. <laughs> These are the people who take the word of God and twist it to work in their favor. Somebody might use Matthew 6 and 25, and they might say, therefore, it says, do not worry about life. What are you to eat or drink? Nor is the body uh, you put on. Is it not more worth than food or clothing? Yeah. Somebody might even go to Hebrews on you and say, for I will be merciful to the unrighteousness and their sins and the lawless and the deeds will be forgiven and remember no more. So that gives me permission to sin more. Somebody might even say, and look at Matthew 12 and 12, it says, how much more valuable than his sheep? Therefore, it's a loss, it, therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. That means that gives me permission to work seven days a week, not going to work church. Yeah. Furthermore, somebody might even use Job 23 and 12 and it says, I have not departed from the commandments of your lips. I had treasured your words in my mouth, the more necessary than food. So now you have given me a title spirit to have more. But here's the clarification for everyone that goes after you with that Bible twisting. It comes from Matthew 5 and 6. And it said, blessed are those who hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus said we need to use our more for the things that bring about righteousness. Righteousness means to have a quality of being morally right or justified. Proverbs 21 and 3 says, do not be righteous and justice is more acceptable than the Lord's sacrifice. To do righteous and justice is more acceptable than the Lord to the Lord than your sacrifice. Amen. When you ask somebody tonight, and this is one thing I ask people, what do you want more in your spiritual walk? What do you want more of? The number one answer you want to hear is say, I need more of Jesus, right? That's what most people say, right? Yeah. To me, that's a broad answer. And it has different many angles. So then I hit them back with this and I say, what does that look like to have more of Jesus? What does it look like to you? Now, if we were to go around this room tonight and we were to hand out papers to everybody and ask everybody to write that answer down, when we get those answers up here, it's going to be many different answers. So our homework <laughs> tonight is to do a, a checkup. This is not my, my points because I got five points from you later. But we need to do a checkup. I call it the A, B, C, D checkup. On the A, we need to ask ourselves, do we need more of Jesus personally? B, we need to ask ourselves, do you have the room to receive it? C, we need to ask ourselves, do you have the heart? to ship it. And D, we need to ask ourselves, what are you willing to give up? See, we all are, I call it departments. <laughs> we have a shipping side and we have a receiving side. See, we love when we receive, but when it comes to shipping, there's a problem. See, we don't mind receiving the more, but we have a hard time to be empty from the more. See, when God blesses you with a car and you see Billy Bob walking down the street coming to church, we turn the other direction instead of giving him a ride. When God blesses you with a house and he asks you to do a, a Bible study in your house, you say, I don't want those people in my house. When God blesses you with a business, you get particular of who you want to hire and who you don't want to hire. Oh, come on, somebody. Everybody wants the more. I got a question for somebody tonight, and it is, did you know that you were in a 50-50 relationship with God? That means that God's not going to do all the work for you. That means that you have some responsibility in the relationship with God. See, to receive more for Jesus, we have to do more. Examples. What's your prayer life like? Do you, do you pray more or is your social life more, more time on your social life than your prayer life? What about reading and studying your word? We say we want more from Jesus. Give me more, more, more. 
but we don't will, we're not willing to put in the work in reading and studying the word and, and getting to know who God is in our life and not what he could do for us, but what we could do for him, how we could further his kingdom, how we could be his hands and feet of the world. See, we don't, we don't, we want more from God. We want more of Jesus, but we're not willing to put in more of the time that it takes to receive what we need from him so we could be that tree of life to the world. Wow. Uh, you must do more if you want more. And if your mores line up with the word of God, it's always going to put a spiritual demand on what he needs from you. The question tonight is, what are you willing to give up? I'm going to go on my five points and I'm going to be closing, but I want to just give a little testimony about me. Just recently, i done something that we all should do, open up the Bible. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what I started doing is I started reading the Bible in a different way, Pastor, because sometimes we can read the Bible, but we don't receive from the Bible. Does that make sense? We, we, we read it as a book, uh, as a novel, right? And so what I started doing, I said, God, I need more. I, I, I need more from you because what I did is I told God, you know, I talk to God like I'm talking to you. I don't have a big, elegant prayer life with big words or anything else. I told him, I said, God, I if I'm going to serve you, I'm going to need to know all more about you. I need to know who I'm serving. I need to know who I'm going to spend eternity life with. And so when he told me, he says, I need you to start reading the Bible. I said, That's, I read it all the time. And he says, no, I need you to read it in a different way. He says, I want you to start from the beginning, and you take one chapter from the beginning, and then I want you to go to from the, new, from the Old Testament, then I want you to go to the New Testament, take a chapter, and then I want you to come back in Psalms. And then... To go even deeper, I want you to ask a question. And so what I did, I tried that. See, the problem is we don't try God because we think that we're going to go to hell. We're going to be strike down, right? So I tried him, Pastor. So I was reading in, in Noah, and, and, and I said, you know, how he built the ark, and, and the big flood came, right? And then I asked God, I said, okay, you, you, you made a covenant with us. You said you're going to put the rainbow in the sky that is never going to destroy life by the flood. And then I asked God, why are people still buy, dying by the flood? People are dying by flood every day. You hear it all the time. And he came back and hit me back. He said, I said, all. I said, all. He said, I will not destroy all the earth. But that means, that means, that tells me, okay, God, I understand some people are still going to die. Because I didn't understand that. Yeah. It was simple, but I needed more understanding. Yeah. So now I'm going back and I'm saying, God, give me more understanding what your word is. I need to know more. Try it for yourself because he is a God that will answer everything. The Bible said there's hidden treasures in the word. Yeah. But we have to go and unlock it. A lot of times we want to open up the Bible and get us the answer right there. God, you fix my problems. I'm on my way. It does not work that way. He says, seek me where I may be found. Yeah. You have to seek God tonight. Tonight I want to give you five points on how do I manage the more. And then I'm going to be out your way. We're going to do prayer. But we need to know how to manage. A lot of times we pray for the overflow, but we don't know how to manage the overflow. A lot of times we pray for money. When money comes your way, then you lose your mind. A lot of times we pray for a spouse or a wife, and then when you get them, you mistreat them and run them off. We need to know how to manage our more. Point number one is your less may be your more. Luke 16 and 10 said, he who is faithful with the least is faithful also with much. And he who is unjust with the least is unjust with the more. You have to look around you and say, I am satisfied with what I got. But God, if you want to advance it, I'm fine with that. A lot of times we look for God and say, you know what, I need you to take me, take my wife and make her better. No, how about you tell, ask God to make you better first and then he can make your wife better. Come on, somebody. Our second point is, do not overlook the moments and opportunities. Ephesians 5 and 6 says, redeeming the time because days are evil. See, your moments may be your opportunity, but the problem is your opportunity may only last for a moment. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, let me give you something. Let me give you something. Years ago, me and my wife used to live in Potomac. Remember, we used to live in those apartments over there? Uh, and a gas station closed down, right? 
and I, I detail cars, you know that, right? And uh, I said, I'm gonna go. We need to go buy that because we're gonna make it a, a, a car wash and everything else. But we kept talking about it. We kept talking about it. And do you know, Pastor? Two months later, there was a car wash detail shop in there already. So you cannot, you cannot, uh, you gotta understand that if God gives you opportunity. It's just like the children of Israel, when he dropped manna, it only was good for a certain time before it went rotten, right? Yeah. So what, do you, what, what makes you think that the opportunity that God gives you is going to last a lifetime? Don't overlook your moments and your opportunities. Take advantage of them. If God has planted a seed in your heart about opening up business, you need to go revisit that. Yeah. You need to ask him, what is your plans? The Bible says that the good steps of the man are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. So he's going to order your footsteps. He's going to show you the direction. Yeah. You need to go back and revisit. Amen. Yeah. Our third point tonight is adjust your alignment. Proverbs 16, 2-3 says, All ways of the man are pure in his own eyes, uh -huh. but the Lord weighs the spirit. He said to commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Yeah. There's a lot of people that play peekaboo with God. They think God can't see what they're doing. They, can't, they, they think that I can just sneak this by God and, and it, everything will be all right. Do you know that most of my failures came in life when I did not okay with God? See, I was out of adjustment and out of alignment. I don't know if you know somebody with back problems, but when they're at back problems, you go to a chiropractor, the first thing they say is what? You're out of alignment. And they have to put you on the table and crack your back and, and put you back in alignment. Anytime you drive a car out of alignment, what does it do? It drags the tires out. It goes different ways. You have to stay in alignment. The Bible says to keep your eyes straight. Do not turn toward the right or towards the left because there is going to be distractions in order to manage your more, you better keep your eyes on the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Our fourth point, our fourth point tonight is you got to get past you. Yeah. Get past you. And that's going to come out of Philippians 2 and 4. And it says, let each other look not only for his own interests, but also the interests of others. Yeah. You have to realize that your moments, your opportunities, your more. It may not be for you. It may be better in the next man. And that's what we have a problem about. We step on each other. We don't want to see the next man above us. So we try to keep his, our foot on his neck. We don't want to pray up the next man. We want to pray up ourselves. What do you think your prayer life's for? I understand it's for you to pray. But my number one prayer life is praying for others. Because I know if he could bless you. He's going to bless me. Can somebody say amen? amen? Our fifth and our last point tonight is going to be wants and needs. And that's going to come out of Psalms 37 and 4. And it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. Commit your works to him first. And I got this point from my wife. She don't know. She don't know I was going to say this, but. It's funny because I like to work on cars. Y'all know that, right? But sometimes I get out of balance. We all do, right? We get out of balance, and I called my wife, and I said, I need this part. She says, no, you want that part. I hate when she says that. She, I, said, Why? I said, honey, I need this. She said, no, you want that. You, I know I need this. No, you want that. What she's doing is putting me back in check. She's putting me back in alignment because a lot of times what we think we need is just a want. Can somebody say amen? Stand to your feet tonight. I pray this word of God just touched someone. And I just want to pray tonight before we get out of here. And I remember as going to church as a young man that there's many times opportunities that the pastor said, you know, come on to the altar, let's pray. And do my pride and arrogant and not anybody wanted to see me go forward I didn't go so I walked out the door bleeding man when you come to church you're supposed to be changed something in here ought to change you 
Now, I said thousands of words tonight, but if you got one word, one word from Jesus will change you. It could be a it, it could be an is, it could be a for. Whatever he wants to use to change, he'll change. So tonight, I want to pray, first of all, if you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and saving your life, that's the first step. None of this right here even matters if you don't take the first step. Two, I want to talk, I want to pray for some people that have maybe just fallen back a little bit. And they're out of alignment. That's none of our business. That's between you and God, and you know who you are. I want to pray for you tonight. Second of all, I want to pray for someone in here. I when God gave me this word, He said, There's some people in here that are seeking more of me. I want to pray for you tonight. If you're online, I want to pray for you too. I want to pray for people who just want to fill in the gap for their loved one because you know they need more of Jesus. See, I didn't say that I want to pray for anybody for material things because those are perishables. I want to pray for somebody for the imperishable thing. And will you come forward? And then I'm going to go down here myself and I'm going to be at the first one at the altar, me and my wife, because... We are seeking more, too. We're seeking more of Jesus in our ministry. We're seeking more of Jesus in our walk and our understanding. So I'm personally not going to leave out of here unless I get prayed over. I'm going to ask the shepherd of this house, my spiritual father, will he come and just pray over us tonight because we need, we need him. We need Jesus. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters who came down here. They made this walk, Father God. You know the walk. You know every steps. You know everything that they need more of, whether it's you, more is more in their, in their finance, their relationships, whatever it is, Lord, they need more. They're hungry. We got even youth down here. They're hungry for you, Lord. They're hungry. Lord, I pray, oh, Father God, that you remove every stumbling block, Father God, that may be stumbling them and tripping them up, Father God, for receiving the more of you, Father God. Lord, I pray, oh, Father God, that they plant their word in your heart tonight, Father God, and that they don't leave here empty, Father God, tonight. Lord, I'm praying for healing in this man's body, Father God. He's seeking more of healing in his body, Father God. Oh, God, you heard this man's cries. You heard this man's worries, Father God. You said by his stripes, by your stripes, he is healed in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight I cover him in the blood of Jesus Christ. From the crown of his head, Lord, to the soles of his feet, Father God. I pray, oh, Father God, that you strengthen every muscle in his body, Father God. I pray, oh, Father God, that everything that's broken within him, Lord, that you fix it, Father God. Bring him back into alignment, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, God, I just ask that you bless this man of God. You've been good to him and his wife, Father God. You've been faithful to him, Father God. You've been good to him. He walked in the door today and said he is a walking miracle. So he's acknowledging, Lord, what you're doing for him in his life. He's acknowledging that he's putting you first, Father God. So, Lord, I'm asking tonight that you give him the desires of his heart, Father God. I'm asking that you bless his wife, Father God. May she stand in the gap, Father God, for the man of God. May he stand in the gap for his wife, Father God. Lord, he asks that you bless them, that you give them the more. In Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, I ask that you bless this man of God, Lord. You've been good to this man, Father God. If it had not been for the Lord on his side, God, the devil would have took him out a long time ago, Father God. You brought him, Father God, from a mighty long way, Father God. And now he's seeking more. I don't know what his more is, Father God, but you know the desires of his heart, Father God. Lord, he asks, oh, Father God, that you reline him back up in adjustment, Father God. Put him back. I keep hearing the word positioning. Put him back in position, Father God. Put him back where he belongs, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, he asks that you bless this mother, Father God. You've been good to her, Father God. You've been faithful to her, Father God. 
You've been her Jehovah Jireh. You've been her provider, Father God. You've been her Jehovah Nisa. You've been her Jehovah Rapha. You are good to her, Father God. She's a faithful woman of God. Singing in your choir, Father God. Leading people to you, Father God. Tonight she's seeking the more. Whatever her more is, Father God, I pray that you grant her the desires of her heart, Father God. Let her not leave here the same, Father God. Bless her in all her ways. Oh, God, bless this mother, Lord. Bless these children, Father God. Oh, God, I pray, put my hands on their head, Father God. These are young kids for your kingdom, Father God. These are our future, Father God. These are future prayer warriors. These are future evangelists. These are future preachers, Father God. This man's going to grow up to be something great, Father God. Lord, I pray, oh, Father God, you break every generational curse that may be trying to hunt him down, Father God. Oh, God, he doesn't understand, Father God, but in due season, Father God, he will reap his harvest, Father God. Lord, I pray for this daughter of Christ, Father God. And Lord, he asks that you guard her, that you lead her, that you protect her, Father God. As she grows up to be a young woman, Father God, Lord, he asks that you order her footsteps, Father God. May she be a leader in her school. May she be a leader outside of her school, Father God. Bless this mother, Father God, as she brings her kids here faithfully, Father God. Sunday, every Wednesday, Father God, making the sacrifices, Father God. Lord, give her the more right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare the more is coming over your life. I declare the more is coming to your house. I declare the more is coming to your finances. I declare the more upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, bless this young lady, Father God. She's faithful, Father God. You know her heart. You know the desires, Father God. Oh, God, I ask that you bless her with the more, that you bless her with more of you, Father God. Order her footsteps. You have a ministry lined up for her. So bless her today, Father God. Lead her and guide her. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, come on and put your hands together. Somebody say, I receive it. Come on, say, I receive it. More of the Lord in my heart. I receive it. Stretch your elbow all the way up and everybody stare at me. Say, Lord, I receive more of the Lord in my life. I am blessed. Say it again. I am empowered. Thank you for the more in every area of my life. I receive you, Lord. Come on, put your elbow up all, all the way up. Stretch your elbow all the way up. And everybody say, Lord, I receive more of you in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit, and in my life. I receive it. Fill me up. One more time. Fill me up with more of you. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, just put your hands together. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it in my spirit, in my soul, in my mind. I receive it in Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody say, I receive it in Jesus' name, I pray. Every day I ask the Lord, Lord, fill me with more of you, and I'll serve you. Turn around and give somebody a hug and say, be filled with the more of the Lord. Be filled with the more of the Lord. You may go back to your seat. God is a good God. Thank you, Minister Booker. Oh, the word of the Lord uh, will not return void. Thank you for the word of the Lord. It will not return void. God is going to give you more. God is going to do more in your life. Just keep serving him. Keep walking with him. Keep trusting him. And keep worshiping him. And keep reading the word of the Lord. More. Somebody say, more. more. Raise your hand with me and say, I receive more of the Lord tonight in my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness and all of his mercy. God is a good God. And he loves you. Thank the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap for Minister Bukanubin. God is a good God. We all need more. Somebody say amen. The Bible says in Luke 6, uh, 
38, he says, give and it shall be given unto you. Here's the more. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and what? Running over. If you want God to give more, you more, then you got to give into his kingdom. Somebody say amen. He says right here, here is overflow. Somebody say overflow. He said you, you have good measure. It'll be pressed down. It'll be shaken together. And it'll be running over. Somebody say running over. And you'll live in the overflow. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his blessings. Thank God for his favor. I just come forward this morning, tonight, give everybody an envelope. And everybody on the back of that envelope, say, I'm believing for more. I'm believing for more. I'm believing for more. I'm believing that God is going to give me more. Not just material things, but spiritual things as well. Somebody say, I'm believing for more. I'm believing for more. The Lord is going to bless your life. Thank you for what he's already done. Thank you for what he's already done. He's already given you a house. Just thank him for it. He's already blessed you with a decent car. Thank him for it. He's already given you a job. Thank him for it. He's already blessed you with good food to eat. Thank him for it. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. He's given you money. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. So just thank him for what he's already done. And then he'll give you more. Somebody say amen. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If we're going to have God's best, sometimes we've got to give God our best. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. If you're making out a check, make it payable to ECC. God will bless you and give it back to you a thousand times more. He says, I'll give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over the overflow. Somebody say overflow. Somebody say overflow. I declare overflow in your life. Somebody say overflow. Overflow in every area of your life. You got to believe the Lord that he's going to do it. Somebody say he's going to do it. He's going to take care of you with the gas prices. He's going to take care of you with the economy here in Denver. He's going to take care of you. But you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your what? In all your ways do what? Acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct your path. Somebody say amen. God love you tonight. And as you give, God's going to give it back to you. Let us all stand tonight. Let us all stand tonight. And then as we give, then just know the Lord's going to give it back to us. Somebody say amen. Raise your gifts up to the Lord. And everybody say to me, say, Lord. I give into your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. I believe that you're going to give me more, more of you, more of your anointing, more of your blessing, more of your favor in every area of my life. I receive it. Say it with me. I receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. Come and lay it on the altar as a gift.
Lord's been good to you, just raise your hand and just say yes. Oh, if the Lord has been good to you, just raise your hand and shout yes. Thank you. Oh, your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you welcome Elder James Woods as he pronounced a blessing over our lives tonight. Thank you, Lord. And Thank the you. Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, yes. Speak unto Aaron yes. and unto his sons, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Yes. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And they shall put my name upon the families of Emmanuel Christian Center, and I will bless them. Father God, we thank you for the word tonight, Father God. The more, Father God, the more of you and less of us, Father God. Use us, Father God. We thank you for the messenger that you sent into our lives tonight, Father God, to give us the word that came from you, Father God. So, Father God, I just pray for every family that's represented here tonight, Father God. Bless us in a mighty way, Father God. Cover us and protect us, Father God. Give us your traveling mercies to and from our destinations, Father God. Keep your head to protection over us, Father God, as we leave this place, but never from your face or your sight, Father God. And bless us in the only way that you can bless us, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, Amen. I said, Thank you. Take a seat real quick, choir. Take a seat, take a seat.